Hi there, this is Carl at Scamper Video, and in this video I'm going to be looking at LoopDeck's latest software update 5.0 and how it works with editing and streaming software. I'm going to be using the LoopDeck CT in this video. If you haven't seen it, we have a previous video all about it, but it's a completely customizable console with touchscreen, dials, buttons, and a control dial. Let's take a look at the software. So, when you're setting up your LoopDeck device, this is what the old software looked like. And this is the new version, 5.0. Immediately, you can see it's a much more streamlined user interface. In terms of layout, you've still got your device and application at the top, and now the workspaces are up here too. So if I select Premiere Pro, you can see the default workspaces. And on the right, all the assignable actions are now all in one place. You've still got the search bar, but now you can filter by whether it's a press or rotate action. For example, if I search zoom, I can filter it by whether it will work with a button or a dial. And this can save so much time when customising a device, because there are a ton of options in something like Premiere Pro. Also, the actions are organised by whether they're from the application, system, or for navigating through the loop deck device. Another big improvement to the software is now you can click on any of the dials or buttons to see what actions are assigned to them, and quickly customise, remove, or add any functions. There's a few more improvements to the software let's have a look at how it works with Premiere Pro first and see how easy it is to work with. When you're using the Loop Deck with Premiere Pro, the default workspaces are editing, colour and audio. When I open the editing page, the first tool which is great is the control dial becomes a shuttle, which is a much nicer way of working through the timeline if you're used to a keyboard and mouse. And what's also cool is the touchscreen in the centre defaults as a play pause button, but if you swipe you get some more options so I can scroll through my clips and pan around the timeline. A great new feature of the software update is I can click on the control dial and easily see each page and what each action does and add more pages from here. As much as the square and round buttons are customizable, they're mostly designed for working with the timeline and are fixed no matter what workspace you're in. It's at the top where you can get creative. These buttons are pre-assigned into several different pages and these are meant to represent different tool sets. You can swipe through them and the same applies to the dials and will change the actions they perform. On the Loop Deck software, they've made this much easier to see, you'll also notice the control and UI respond to each other, and if you want to add a tool page, you can simply click add new page here and fill that with any actions that you want. Back on the home page, you've also got the audio workspace, which is great for keyframing, which I won't go into on this, but one that is worth touching on is the colour workspace if you haven't seen it before. When you open the workspace, you've got a load of tools up here, you can do some initial adjustments like tint and white balance using the dials, and can do all this without opening the Lumetri panel but the thing that stands out is the colour wheel. So I can select the colour wheels page, for example, and choose one of the shadows, mid-tones and highlights. Then this is designed to work like a tracking ball to choose my colour and the dial is used to change the levels. And this feels much more intuitive than dragging sliders with a mouse. That's the default workspaces for Premiere Pro. If you want to create your own workspace, it's super easy to do. You just click workspace up here, create new, and then I can assign this from the navigation section on the right. I can quickly grab some actions here and start populating this and start adding pages and go from there. Also if you want, you can select the action and down here you can change the icon. But from this, you can see how easy it is to start building and populating your own workspace and just how endless the possibilities are. So that's just a quick look at how the Loop Deck CT works in Premiere Pro and how the new software version 5.0 makes it much easier to customise and create your own workspaces. Another highlight from the update is that Loop Deck now supports vMix, and this is great because it means you can mix more quickly and accurately than trying to navigate using a mouse, especially during a live stream or recording. I won't go too deep into each workspace, but just to give you a brief example, you've got the control centre here, and you can select input switcher, and when I select my clip, I've got the options to mix it in here. If I want to choose my transitions, I can go to the transitions page, either through the home page or using the number 5 button, and all my transitions are here. I can mix individual audio tracks and audios and volumes. If I'm working on a larger project, I can filter the input categories quickly here, and these square buttons are configured for starting and stopping recordings and streams. So that's just a quick example. There's obviously so much more you can do with this, but it shows how it can make working with vMix much quicker and easier, especially when you have the option to customise this to your workflow. That's just a quick look at the new LoopDeck 5.0 software, and how much easier it is to use and customise. 
the support for other Adobe applications, like After Effects, with a streaming software like OBS, and although DaVinci Resolve isn't integrated, you can import a downloadable custom profile. If you've got any questions, make sure to let us know in the comments, and also make sure to check the Loop Deck range out at Scan Pro Video.